quick shout out to Storyblocks and Indochino for sponsoring this episode. South Park, I think the one thing that kind of like broke my love for it a little bit was when somebody pointed out South Park's point of view is just that everything new sucks. I'm going to go old school internet. Up until then, there was like kind of framework for comedy. And then the internet kind of just destroyed that and was like, anything can be funny. I ask those stupid questions all the time. It's okay. Sometimes we just don't know stuff. And sometimes people just love to laugh at people before because they feel smarter. They had castaways, which is funny because it's very similar to that one Smosh sketch. Remember when you were stranded on the beach? Yeah. Did we rip it off? I don't know. Probably. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Dude, I put butter. I put butter in my coffee this morning. Oh, you're doing a bulletproof coffee? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, doing a bulletproof coffee situation. Is that what it is? Is Yeah. You're going to get, you got that MCT oil in there. Joe Rogan. I'm making sure to stir it up so that the oil doesn't build up at the top. Did you just did you just do that randomly or did you know that that was a thing? I was like, I figure it's a thing. I'll try it. A little salted butter in my coffee. Dang. Well, Am I just guess naturally what? a legend? Behind the curve. Oh, yeah. God. Um, hello. Welcome to another Smoshcast. Today I am joined by the the people that are known none other than by Shane Top and Courtney Miller. Hi. Hello. I I hate my background today. I feel so like I feel like I'm, it's ugly behind me. I'm I'm mad. Uh, Courtney, have you never seen what I film in? <laughs> At least it's like empty and light. It's an- empty room it is my murder room yeah but like at least it's like a cute murder room you know mine's like a cluttered weird dark ian finds room. an abandoned office building to record the pod in every day every um, day there's a lot of abandoned day. offices in the in the yeah, state of california so we're basically the last yeah, well, of it's us it's actually set walls so I, right now i'm recording at the grand canyon the Wi-Fi reception here is great that's awesome man mm-hmm. great Lucky work you. Yeah, an eagle just flew by the camera, you, oh. you can't see it, it's on the other side. Yeah, Fun. Well, and for those listening or watching, or pretty, pretty much watching, uh, the reason I'm in this weird setup is because my microphones hate me and they mm. are possessed. I don't know if my apartment is haunted, but these microphones are because the microphone on my camera for sketch and my microphone for podcast are just deciding to go like this. Like That's what that. they sound like. Maybe it has something to do with your voice. They just heard your voice and then they killed themselves. Maybe you're techno cursed. That's a cool name. Techno cursed. That's definitely like the the next uh, like Blumhouse movie. Like it's the next happy happy (laughs) death day. Happy death day. Techno cursed. Paranormal Mm -hmm. activity. Techno. It's just a it's a purge. It's a purge sequel. I'm ready for this. Who wants to go first with their top top five five comedic inspiration? Top five comedic inspirations. Number five. You were really good at that. Thank you. Maybe I'm the voice of that guy. Your Twist. Epic how to. Um, my number, I'll start. Okay, number five. Are we starting with like number five go ahead counting down? I didn't really order mine, so don't don't take this by any okay. sort of mine's uh, kind of a loose order too, anyway. Yeah. But we'll just kind of instinctually important. pick. For number five, the Lonely Island. Uh, what? Andy Samberg, Yorma Tacone, Akiva. Akiva, I don't know his last name right off the top of my head. But he Shri- does. Schaefer? Akiva. Schaefer? Shriver? Yeah, I think Schaefer? it's one of those. Yeah. He, dude, because he's by, he's in my list. Yeah. So, um, yeah, The Lonely Island. Uh, I mean, they're in my they, list. They got started on the internet. They had a couple failed TV pilots. Yeah, which awesome are actually town. really funny. Yeah, you can actually track it down and, and watch them. They're pretty funny. Uh, just didn't if you want a sandwich, come roll with me. Yeah, but you can. It's funny because like you you see like little pieces that they took from like Awesome Town and put it into like later things because it didn't get picked up. Yeah, dude. Uh, dude, I watched Hot Rod the other day, and do you remember? So good. Do you remember Chester? There's this uh, guy named Chester. He's like a like a tall Asian dude. The guy, the guy who dances around. Oh, he's around. awesome. He's yeah. in so much of their stuff. Like he's he's closely like associated with them. Yeah, he's I awesome. Feel like he was in like all the old Lonely Island stuff, and I was he yeah. in Pop Star? Did he have a? Part I in haven't Popstar? seen Pop Star from start to finish. Oh, I know. Dude, Pop Star, Pop Star is actually like legit. 
good. Okay. Like, Cause I, for some reason the marketing didn't do it for me. So I was like, mm, was I don't bad. want a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. It was, the marketing was bad. And also just like the whole, because it was like, so it looked like a big Justin Bieber parody. It seemed like yeah. it was three, three years too late, but it is like legit a funny movie. Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, Lonely Island, like when they were doing their shorts on, you know, YouTube, I guess. Two guys dude, in the pool. Just two guys. Do you know what the their name Lonely Island comes from? No. Those three guys lived in an apartment and that's what they called their apartment. Aw. No. Lonely Island. I'm obsessed with them, dude. They're great, man. They are really funny. And they do and they do seem to like stick together when they do these other projects like hot rod yeah they all have like their own individual talents it's impressive that they've stayed like making stuff together so long i feel like that never happens and when i got to see their practice tour dude they did it all the things all the iconic things like even lazy sunday from from Mm. the snl digital shorts and stuff i can't even tell you how much they've changed my life are they in your list somewhere oh yeah they have to be well then don't 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 talk about too much all right until we get to your Lonely Island. I want to hear from you. Shane, number five. So, okay, I'm switching my number four, number five, because I've just decided my number five is the internet. Particularly, Very specific. I'm going to go old school internet um, with a lot of the stuff that would just show up on E-Bombs World. Early internet mm-hmm. stuff like Bo Burnham and Barats and Beretta. The problem was it would be a different video all the time that would make me laugh. And I loved how chaotic uh, internet comedy was compared to everything I had seen before. Uh, so I want to say it was around 2005, 2006, where I just became obsessed with it. The thing is back then it was so different because I I think it's similar to like walking down the beach looking for driftwood. You're just kind of like, all right, I'm going to check the internet today and see if there's anything funny. And you'd look for like an hour and some days you'd just be like, there's nothing on the internet today. There's nothing new. <laughs> there's nothing funny. I'm going to check tomorrow. And sometimes well, there it'd be was like, there was websites on the internet. Right. But they point. would only like E-Bombs World would just have like upwards yeah, of 10 like new no things. New videos a for, yeah. And so you just kind of be like, all right, nothing today. Um, you know, maybe I'll rewatch something like maybe I'll rewatch one of those GI Joe dubs or something. Mm-hmm. The, that early stuff I just loved. It made me laugh so hard. It was so weird and and like i said chaotic is like the best word i can describe absurdist it as. absurd oh man i was obsessed with it uh barats and beretta i watched mm-hmm. all of their stuff back then bo burnham whenever he came out with something new i was like hell yeah but a lot of the times for me i was not a subscriber of anything it would just be whatever turned up all of that back then was such a huge inspiration and i think it really got me um comedically thinking outside the box Like up until then, you know, there was like kind of framework for comedy. And then the internet kind of just destroyed that and was like, anything can be funny. (laughs) And so that was, that was kind of uh, inspiring. Because it also destroyed the gatekeeping for comedy. Like anybody can create something online. Like on TV, like you, you had to go through a huge process. You had to go through censors. You had to go through everybody. And now Mm -hmm. all of a sudden you had just like insane people like teenagers, like, you know, Ego Raptor, Aaron Hansen. Right. Creating flash cartoons I think that's, by himself. But I think that's a big thing is like for the most part back then, you never saw people your age doing funny stuff. It was all adults doing mm-hmm. comedy. The internet and like YouTube, I feel like influenced uh, editing style in like mm-hmm. feature films for sure. Like comedic cuts. There was like a whole new world of that on YouTube. Right. Like it was cool when you finally started seeing those like incorporated. In. It it oh, changed yeah. it changed everything. Number five. Okay, so it's it's kind of a tie for me a number five between YouTube channels. Which I if I mention these channels already on our top YouTubers list, I'm sorry, but I will go into like the comedy aspect this time. So it's a tie between the channel Balloon Shop and Liam Kyle Sullivan. Balloon Shop is like sketches that don't make sense, like. It's crazy because they were making videos around the same time as Smosh was, but they were so different. Like the sketches were an entirely different like world in terms of like arc and like meaning and any kind of sense. And like a lot, of, it's crazy because, oh, uh, what's his name? When Owen? Still, is it Owen? Owen Rogers. Owen Rogers. Olin, Olin. Olin. Olin Rogers. That's yeah. what I knew. It was, I was like, Olin Rogers is really the only one who's like seriously still in the digital space. Mm-hmm. But those other guys that were a part of that, they were like, 
some seriously funny people, dude. And like, they were kind of, they seemed like a Lonely Island minus like the music aspect. Yeah. And then Liam Carl Sullivan, his character work, I loved so much. And I think it definitely influenced when I was like doing YouTube videos and did like no vacancy and stuff. I did the similar thing where it's like, oh, this part of the room is this character. And just like, I, it for sure influenced how I edited my videos. And it's crazy because Liam Kyle Sullivan, because if, if people don't know who I'm talking about, he's the guy who made shoes. But what's Dude. cool is that yeah, guy, so that, that incredible sketch comedian, he edited Smosh Pit videos for like a year or two, right? Mm -hmm. At Defy. Yeah. yeah. I remember we, we were like walking through the editing bay that was like the super dark room in the Smosh, in like the building and just walking past and like seeing our video being edited. And then looking down and Liam Kyle Sullivan turns on is like, hey guys. I was like, huh? You're yeah. my dad. Like, <laughs> you're so my dad. He's such a Shocking. chill guy. Such a yeah. chill, laid yeah. back, mm -hmm. quiet dude. So crazy. Um, his videos were next level. I mean, they ruled the world for, for periods mm -hmm. of time back yeah. then. Yeah, he yeah, kind of like owned like the MySpace era. Mm -hmm. Yes. Of yes. Like mm -hmm. comedy. And then Balloon Shop, I feel like was super underrated. Like it did they didn't blow up as much it seemed. I never heard about them until like you showed showed me them, but I would have loved their stuff if I had seen it back in the yeah. day. But there My was a lot of people sketch, like them. Like Derek, the roommate, Whips, just like the mm -hmm. weirdest stuff. Sketch comedy Br back then was, was so Britannic was I think Britannic is the best one. Like some mm -hmm. of them are so smart. Um, David Blaine Street Magic. Yes. Like, God when, and that and one of those guys is in SNL right now. Brighton. Well, they were. Th SNL. That's that Blank. was well. Um, that <clears throat> the David Blaine sketch came out of Groundlings. Um, mm. that that was a Groundlings. All oh, they were all Groundlings people. So mm. they're all pretty well connected in that world. But yeah, one of those guys, like just I mean, like as of maybe like what, like four years ago? Children? Yeah, five years ago. What's his name? What's his name? I forget. Mm, I've seen Mickey. I, I, is it Mickey something? Think I don't so. Know. I don't watch this. I had seen him. I had seen him I've live at Groundlings, so though. It's so crazy how I, like you can go from religiously watching SNL to mm. not even being aware. That's that how it's always it's works. Life, SNL it's has five years on, five SNL. years off. It's yeah. always been that way. Ian. Ian. Number four, South Park. Yeah. Mm. I feel like yeah, South Park for me, which I wasn't. When it first came out, I wasn't allowed to watch. South Park? Yeah. It came out. I mean, and dude, yeah. How old were you when it started? You were probably like I was six. In, I was in, I think, sixth grade when it when it first came out. Maybe fifth grade. Same like same really? time as Pokemon. Pokemon. That, that yeah. I, I wanna say that's because it was the nineties. Yeah. I remember I remember like one of my friends like had like like he had cool parents, which meant he had bad parents. He we watched South Park over it at his house once or twice and i was like oh my god this is so this is so bad like we can't be watching this especially those first seasons bro they're so those crude. first seasons are so crude like ridiculously crude yeah the issue i mean like i i guess nowadays like it i have i have certain issues with with uh with south park but there was a time when like they really hit their stride yeah like they hit their strides so well and just like they had like a multi-part series where it was like uh cartman wanted the we uh and he, fro and he froze himself. he goes to the future well there yes. was also the one where he wanted the ds for uh grand theft auto chinatown wars and he goes to the future and it's like there's no more religion but there's like the atheists league and the atheists federation and they hate each other or yeah, something like that. They yeah. always have like stuff like there's like several the, the make love not warcraft episode was Oh incredible. my god, I watched that episode while playing Warcraft. Oh yeah. That was back when I was into playing World of Warcraft and I remember I was watching it I had like the head set up and everything with the entire guild I was playing with and we were all oh. watching it while playing World oh, Warcraft and we we're all laughing so our asses off. It was so good. Like and I feel like I yeah, I mean South Park is great. The the issue isn't so much with the content as it is some of the people that watch it that don't understand the point with like Cartman always like yelling like, "Oh, you fat Jew." He's a bad character not to be emulated. But some people right took, you know, like the really like racist stuff. Well, that's the issue probably when a bunch of little kids 
little kids watch it and they yeah, they don't understand so to. they just start repeating yeah. what Cartman says. Yeah. Yeah, cuz that's the tough thing with creating a, a character that's supposed to be unlikable is that it's tough that it it does put that stuff out in the world. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing with Always Sunny. Like and you mm-hmm. and the weird thing is, dude, like there is a section of people that watch Always Sunny and they are not good people. Like cuz oh, I went yeah. I dude, I went into uh Cause I watched, I know it's getting off track, but I watched. Uh, I was catching up on Always Sunny, and I watched the uh, Mac finds his pride episode where they do that like beautiful like dance number, mm-hmm. and like I went to the reviews on IMDb and was like reading some of like the one star reviews, and I was like, holy crap, there are just a lot of really bad people. Dude, there <gasps> were people. There were people who thought the Colbert Report was actually a conservative <laughs> show. Yeah, because usually a lot of shows when they have like that. Sh- person show up they usually come and go pretty fast or they are very clearly losing in yeah, every not way a main character yeah <laughs> it's a fine line to walk and yeah, yeah. like but they I, trip I mean up like and... south park they just had so many good so many good things about it i think the one thing that kind of like broke my my love for it a little bit was when somebody pointed out they're like oh south park's point of view is just that everything everything new sucks oh uh, and i'm like yeah they're kind of right like it's just like there that is kind of the point of view of like, oh, this thing, it sucks. This yeah. I feel like it I sucks. F- I feel like also a lot of and I'm gonna use the term faux intellectual. If you just take the stance of I hate everything and I'm gonna make fun of everything, that's not a free pass necessarily to just say whatever you want and be smart because you hate everything. Mm-hmm. But that is what a lot of shows take on. It's what a lot of people take on too. They try to have like, that. Oh, I hate everything, commentary. so it's fine. I'm smart because I hate everything and everything's bad. It's kind of <laughs> like, all right, man, like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk to you guys real quick about Indochino. Guys, it's not the 90s. You have no excuse to be wearing clothing that doesn't fit. If you find most of your outfits are too long, too short, too tight, or too loose, Indochino is here to make your life a whole lot easier. They make high quality custom suits, shirts, coats, and more, all for a perfect fit at a great price. And you get to customize everything from the fabric and lining to the lapel shape and monogram. The choice is all yours. Your clothing is then made to your exact measurements so it fits you perfectly. The best part is Indochino's custom suits start at just $2.99, all customizations included what yeah that's nuts indochino has showrooms across north america or you can book a virtual appointment and shop online at indochino.com and right now you can get an extra 30 dollars off any purchase of 399 or more by using code cadence at checkout that's indochino.com code c-a-d-e-n-c-e Hey, y'all ever heard about Storyblocks? It's something that we use, but I don't know if you've heard about it. Storyblocks is a complete solution for creators and businesses looking for an unlimited library of high quality, royalty-free video, audio, and images through cost-effective subscription plans. Storyblocks is perfect for when you're in the need of a soundbite, B-roll clip, template, or graphic. Whether you're a freelancer trying to speed up your production processes or an agency looking for a wide selection of content in one place, they offer flexible licensing and flat price to fit any budget or need. Storyblocks offers unlimited downloads through their subscription membership plans. You'll have access to a massive library of high quality footage, AE templates, music, illustrations, and sound effects, yours to download watermark free. The best part is you can use your downloaded content anywhere, including YouTube. We at Smosh use Storyblocks. The editors give it a thumbs up. And to learn more about Storyblocks and get started today, head to storyblocks.com slash Smoshcast and un- Unlimited library of video, audio, images, and more at your fingertips at storyblocks.com slash smoshcast. Shane, number four. All right, number four. I'm going to go back to my childhood and I'm going to go to the things that made me laugh the hardest when I was a little kid and uh, what I think got the ball rolling. And it's a tie. Um, because I would switch between two different channels when I was a little kid. I would switch between Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. And there were two shows that I essentially was always waiting for and wanted to watch. And if they were on, I'm watching it no matter what. And those shows are Johnny Bravo and All That. Johnny Bravo. Oh, yeah, All That. Johnny Bravo was my 
Johnny Bravo was my poop, dude. Uh, <laughs> Johnny Bravo was my so poop, good. Dude. That could I, be your it slogan. Was, it was probably my first like impression. I wanted to like, I was always trying to do the voice. I loved that it was just like, here's, I think the character of someone who thinks they're awesome, even though they're a complete loser, is still my favorite character type. And I do it all the time. I love that that trope. Um, and Johnny Bravo sums it up so perfectly. And he's such a, the way they made him such a dumbass <laughs> is so great. I still quote it sometimes. It was, some of my favorite quotes are, um, he. There was like, oh, it's like, yeah, we gotta go in in forty five minutes. And he's like, forty five minutes. That's almost forty six minutes. And I was just like, that's so dumb, and it's so dumb. <laughs> and I just love stuff like that. And then all that was yeah, just dude, ridiculous. I forgot about uh, them. It was so good, especially that first iteration was incredible. And I mean, the cast was nuts. I mean, Amanda mm-hmm. Bynes and Keenan Thompson and and so many others that were so good. Um, Obviously, I'm sure if I rewatched it now, it's designed for little kids. I would think it's dumb. That's why I got so mad when all that came back recently and people were like, this is nowhere near as good as the original. I'm like, you're 30 years old now. Of course, it's not as funny to you. Yeah. Like, yeah, let Are it. You're going to find a, you know, Keenan Thompson sitting in a bathtub yeah. with a French accent funny. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, stop watching kids shows as an adult and judging it yeah. as an adult. I thought it was so great. I think it's I. I mean, I say this, I'm a little biased because of so random, but I do wish there was more sketch comedy. And I mean, with TikTok and everything, it is available, but sketch comedy was just so fun. And yeah, I think dude. It's, it can be such a good way of like pointing out absurdities in life. Absolutely. I should have had Amanda Bynes on this list, man. Oh, man. I You know what's crazy is um, I guess the last run of it was Sam and Cat. But so there's Sam and Cat was was with Jeanette McCurdy and mm-hmm. uh, Ariana Grande. Sam and Cat is technically a spinoff of all that because what? Sam and Cat is a spinoff of iCarly because Jeanette McCurdy, I don't know if it's the same character, but like they it's, essentially It's victorious took, but, and iCarly put together. But, right, but mm-hmm. okay, so let's, let's, then let's just go back one and say iCarly is a spinoff of all that because iCarly had um, Miranda Cosgrove who was in Drake and Josh Drake and Josh was a spinoff of Amanda of the Amanda show because Drake and Josh were on the Amanda show. And the Amanda show is a spinoff of all that because they took literally Dan Schneider from all that would just take an actor from that show and make a new show about them. And that's what he did for over 20 years. And it worked. So so all that was like the UCB of of Nickelodeon. (laughs) I guess so. That's crazy, dude. Uh, Courtney. My number four. And if it's kind of similar to Shane's of back to my younger years of what I always watched, Smosh, <laughs> Smosh, baby, dude. I sketch comedy. Like I have, I have a sketch on my old YouTube channel called Panda. That is definitely because I was watching a lot of Smosh and just really wanted to make a sketch with my friends. It was not a sketch at all. It was literally like the weirdest thing where I was just like, oh my God, we have Panda Express and we're so excited. I watched Smosh so much. I remember my friend Marissa and I would come home from school. I would make us our special snack of Ritz crackers, ham, cheddar cheese, uh, (laughs) and a flavor blasted goldfish. And we would do our homework, but we would watch we would alternate between watching smosh sketches and also recording ourselves on the laptop webcam just being mm. dumb yeah and then i guess it got to the point where I've, I've said this so many times i feel like but where i would i would i found the smosh.com and would watch all the bts because i mm. love the bts just as much if not more than the sketches themselves because i was also just so interested in the world of like making this stuff so it just blew my mind to like see you guys clearly successful and making these silly sketches. And like, I still have it etched in my memory. Like, if, I think it's if video games were real one of Ian going, eh, eh, wah, eh. Mm-hmm. And I can't tell you the first time I heard you do that in real life, I went, oh, oh, oh because it was so crazy to me and it's like yeah i mean it was years and years of that i didn't watch you guys for a long time and i started watching you a little bit again when olivia joined because i like we i would hang out with her in la at that one studio where viners would hang out and she was like guys i'm auditioning for smosh and here's these bits i'm gonna do and we all thought it was super funny even though she was just like 
it was she was the same person that she is today during Try Not to Laugh. But when she joined, I was like, cool, and I started watching him again. But yeah, it was I was I had very much like grown from it, but it, it felt so cool to like that now be a part of it. And I feel like we've kind of aged it up in a way, and now we're like it's stuff that we find funny, not just what Defy claimed as fourteen year olds just figuring life out. And that's well, our that was their interpretation of it. We never, of our I mean, we yeah. never, we never made anything specifically. No, it was know, it was raunchy audiences. humor, but for young yeah. people, like it, it's it was kind of almost on that plane of South Park, where it's like this is very young looking, but it's f- raunchy. Yeah. I mean, South Park was a big was a big influence for me. So yeah, there was a lot of violence, a lot of blood, a lot of. I mean, it was just all know. absurd. It was like yeah. cartoonish absurdity. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of like blood, Park, a lot of boobs. Yep. Yeah, South Park <laughs> had a big had a big part in in shaping. Makes how, sense. How so in a way, South Park inspired me as well. Now I can't have this list and act like Smosh didn't influence me before I started working here. So good, good. There you go. Now my job is I'm even more secure because I. Yeah, Smosh. Shane. So it better be on your list too, bitch. <laughs> 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 um, I need to go back in time. Yeah. All right, Ian. Number, <laughs> no, number three. three. I I literally just put this on here as we were talking. SNL. Uh, hey. I mean, yeah. I think SNL inspired all that, right? Well, I mean, yeah. SNL was the first televised. Or no, it wasn't the first televised sketch comedy. But like, it was just the first time it became Mainstream. nationally huge. Yeah. yeah. It was the first like cultural hit it also sure. was like counterculture like sketch comedy so. never had like really gone for the throat like it did very quickly yeah i mean those 70s ones like i think the first one had george carlin as the host like the first I episode think so yeah yeah and, and it was just him episode. doing stand-up like going hard like they, they went for it yeah the first the first season of saturday night live is nothing like the saturday mm-hmm. night live that we grew up on like it was insane and it was it was just counterculture it was like a way right. of saying like oh, f- you like we're because you know it was in time of like you know you had your you had the suits and then you had the hippies yeah and yeah. it was it was very much like their way of standing up yeah. to holding up a mirror well. to that's society what's, mm-hmm. that's what's funny when people are like oh, i hate snl it's so political now i'm like it's always been political mm-hmm. it literally yeah, to a degree. always you've been more been. involved in it i guess when you, yeah. when you say that yeah i mean for for me i mean like i said i didn't have cable growing up so when i was old enough like that was one of the things that i looked forward to on saturday night was i was able to like stay up late and watch saturday night live and i would go to the blockbuster and i would and oh. I would rent, and I would rent uh, the best of. Uh, oh yeah, dude. Nice. We have the things. best of Will Ferrell one in my yeah, house. Yeah, they're so good. The best we'll get of's like are best great. of like Tim Robbins. Chris uh, Kattan was one of my favorites. Chris Kattan, Will Ferrell. I and I grew up in the the Will Ferrell, Daryl Hammond, Chris Kattan, Tina Fey, Amy Poehler kind of like era. It's a good era. So that's it's a good that's era. the era that I know and that I thought was funny but obviously at that even at that time of course there's people that were like eh, it's no this doesn't compare to the the 80s and people in the 80s like well hated, yeah people hated the 80s one like everyone loved the very first saturday night live and then when when the second season of saturday night live came out uh well it was done without what's his face the guy that runs it can why is the this? guy who owns snl yeah um Oh, this is going to bug me. Wow. I reference him um, all the time and I just I can't know. think of it right now. Who's um, the creator of SNL? I know he's not necessarily the creator, but. Lauren Michaels created Saturday Night Live. Lauren Michaels. Lauren. Michaels. Lauren, 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 Michaels. Michaels. Lauren. Lauren. So yeah. he left uh, after the first one, I think. And then a different person came in and people destroyed her. Like. They said that she's responsible for like all of it being bad and like it was all Which terrible. One? Like the second season of Saturday Night Live. What was her name? Um, Sorry. Sorry. I don't remember her name, but Just she didn't last. Like he he yeah. came back and then they like reorganized it and whatever. Jeez. But yeah. Anyway, uh, Saturday Night Live, whether Hell you yeah. like it or yeah, hate dude. it, it it changed so many generations with. Yeah, with, absolutely. Uh, oh, dude. Comedy. 
It's had so many like insanely good casts. It's mm-hmm. also partially what got Lonely Island to be so freaking huge because they were mm-hmm. like the SNL digital shorts all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think I think for for a short amount of time, you know, when we started making YouTube videos, like that was an aspiration. It, that sounded like a a dream. To, to I mean, that's be, how I've to, ex- I've explained Smosh as like kind of like a stepping stone for for like because that was back when Defy was all about young teens and and uh, teens figuring themselves out. I was like, well, this is kind of a way of like introducing those young viewers to sketch comedy in this format of like so where so then we eventually lead those people to then watch shows like SNL, you yeah, know, like we yeah, are we a always, stepping stone. Yeah, I, I that's yeah, I've always kind of felt like. Smosh was never was never on the same same level as Saturday Night no, Live. No, not quite. Not not the same like Smosh Live v- was dope. Viewer though. audience. Smosh Live was dope, but it was obviously above like Nickelodeon. Um, well, dope. Number, number three. three. So my number three. Um, this is actually very specific. All right. So in the late '90s, Family Guy started. And it got canceled after a few seasons. Mm -hmm. And there was this long period of time, or not that long, but this period of time where Family Guy was not on the air, but the DVD box sets for it were available for the first, I think it was the first five seasons. And my brother got them and he was like, hey, you would think this is really funny. You should watch this. I was like 11 at the time. Oh, perfect. 10 or 11. I watched the (laughs) shit out of those box sets. Yeah. I watched all, the first four seasons of Family Guy. I watched over and over and over again. And I, at, until that point, had never laughed so hard. And I didn't even understand a lot of the jokes. What I sure. think Family Guy really taught me was timing. The timing on that show was so unique, especially for then. Like, you never had the like stuttering or pausing that was in Family Guy. You never saw that in other type of sketch com- sketch comedy or in comedic shows. It's strange to say that it's revolutionary, but Stewie doing his whole like, um, so you're gonna write that novel? You uh, you gonna you gonna put in those those nice characters? You gonna have that um, that climax? Step? You gonna do that? Like yeah, there you can't find a joke told like that, that yeah. in a show before that or in or in especially not an animated i mean and and i understand like simpsons obviously started it all but the way they would sometimes tell jokes i just thought was so good and also was the rapid fire nature similar to like internet comedy and adult swim stuff a, a joke cannot be funny like the actual context of the joke and the subject matter mm-hmm. but if you Give the right type of pausing yeah, or the spacing. Yeah, of a pregnant pause. Yeah. I mean, uh, so many characters and so many jokes I've done on Try Not to Laugh are not funny jokes at all. I just, I'm just like, oh, how will I tell this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is all that matters. Timing um, helps. Number three. Number three. I like thought of another one. So I guess he'll have to be an honorable mention, but whatever. Um, my number three is Bo Burnham. A- nice. Excellent human being. I think that, like, he's obviously a comedian. His shows were stand-up comedy, but they've kind of evolved to being, like, honestly, like, a one-man show. But something that he taught me was, like, obviously, he's, he's funny. But then he would, like, hit you with, like, a message that would just punch you in the gut. Like, he would all of a sudden just have this, this like, deeper meaning to his songs or, or, or just, like, if you've ever been to a Bo Burnham show, you know what I mean. But like his specials definitely touch on it. Um, then he had that Zach Stone is going to be famous TV show that lasted for a season. Yeah. How was that? It was it was OK. Like it, if it were to come out this year, I think it would it might do better than it did back then. Because like it was, it was way ahead of its time. Because like now we're in this age where like Internet influencers and people trying to be famous on the Internet is literally everyone. But yeah, like he his songs and like obviously a lot of the people I've, I've been influenced, you know, Kyle Sullivan, Lonely Island, they have this article of like using music and I love music. It's been a huge part of my life growing up. Helped me like find who I was as a teenager. So when you have someone who's funny and you love comedy and then uses the, the your favorite thing to also just like really make you feel. And like, it's crazy in comedy when all of a sudden when they hit you with something that makes you feel something, it like hits you that much harder. Mm-hmm. And because you aren't expecting it. You aren't expecting to be like, oh, my heart, what the f- 
Like, and he does that, dude. And I love it. I love it so much. When I first saw his special words, 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 my brain was never the same again. Blew my mind. And I didn't even know he was on YouTube. I didn't know mm-hmm. he existed. Yeah, bro. Uh, but then I, that's after that I did. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's one of, I mean, he was probably the first, like, aside from Lonely Island, he was probably the first, like, YouTube success story. He had plenty of success on YouTube. He could have... He could have stayed on YouTube and just continued doing funny songs, but he was like, "No, yeah. like I want to be a a you know a real comedian mm-hmm. and do shows and and work on material that I then do for a special." Yeah, and then he went out and f- did it, and He's, he was he really did f- he, he was legit. on Vine too. He just yeah. shows up every now and then and just crushes the yeah. industry. I'm convinced. Um, I'm convinced that when he left Vine, that's when Vine went to because <laughs> he left. He just up and pieced out like a few years yeah. in. I'm convinced. That's why. I mean, I'm, I'm. I have no doubt that he's probably a very sad person because <laughs> being a, that he's smart got, he carries a lot. On being his that smart yeah. has got to be a bummer. If you've ever listened to a podcast with him, like, yeah, I mean, he. I think he kind of has like a the curse of knowledge. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But yeah, I've, I feel like I've heard uh, someone talk about like on a podcast somewhere or an interview that like he mentions channels like Smosh, but he didn't like mention our name specifically. Right. But right. he like how he kind of like really disliked everything that they're about. He really appreciates somebody that's that works on material that like works on it for a good amount of time and then put and yeah. then. And yeah, we're puts, like a it, puts it out into the world. Where yeah, I mean, his style that is to come out every five years. Yeah, and, yeah. So that doesn't exactly work on YouTube. Like, mm-hmm. you have to be consistent with your content. You can't, you can't work on something for two years and put it out. Well, there's also a difference between like people who are an individual and they only have to worry about paying their own bills. And when you work with like a big team mm-hmm. and everyone, ha- you're, you're, you have to put out content in order to, for everyone to keep yeah you know staying afloat well and also Um, he's just a really funny person so yeah there's probably stuff that he just doesn't like and it probably makes him angry (laughs) i'm sure (laughs) i have i have yeah i I don't i don't hold anything against against both if he doesn't but didn't he invite you to the premiere of eighth grade remember we couldn't go because of vidcon yeah oh i also my dream i have a feeling bo burnham doesn't like hate much i think he's just i think it's more like he has a way of going about things and yeah all right shall we move on yeah yeah and number two number two um so this this is kind of close i mean i was i'm ballparking what shane already did uh but i made it kind of a little bit more specific but not quite it's 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 the same general like internet old internet i wrote on here, I wrote Newgrounds cartoons, like Flash yeah, cartoons. Yeah, Newgrounds, man. But mm-hmm. but it goes beyond Newgrounds. It's like, you know, albino black sheep and, and uh, e-bombs. You know, obviously, this is before YouTube, and what people were creating was Flash animations, just like little oh, cartoons. Man. They were and so funny. So good. Like, obviously, Homestar Runner was a thing. Homestar which, Runner! Which only resonates to, like, a very specific like group of people Mm -hmm. that existed on the internet during that time. Those first Ego Raptor flash animations are still my favorite thing he's ever done. The Ninja Gaiden one, oh my God. There was this creator, uh, Ed Atlan, and he made like several like little little cartoon series, but he made this one series that was ongoing called um, Space Tree, the Space Tree in Space, which was incredible. And that was like very, that was like heavily inspirational for uh, both Anthony and myself when we were starting to create sketches. So wow. big ups, big ups to uh, Ed. I, there, there was a lot of those series that you just find an animated series online and you would just watch all of it. And there was one that we can cut this if we want, but there was one that I thought was so funny back then. And it was called House of Cosby's. And it was about a guy who cloned <laughs> Bill Cosby and had a million and every clone would be a oh, different Cosby. Yeah. So it'd be like, this Dude. one's dancing Cosby and this one's science Cosby. Dude, that one was And it was crazy. ridiculous. And I didn't know until like recently that that was Justin Roiland. Mm-hmm. 
I had no oh. clue. I was obsessed with it. And I look back and I'm like, oh, it was totally Rick and Morty style comedy. But this is back in like 2005. Yeah. I mean, this was forever ago. Dude, the freaking, uh, the, well, I guess it wasn't really on the internet first, but that's where I saw it. Uh, the Rejected cartoon. Oh, yeah. Stuff so like good. I feel like you know, it's way familiar. You know, Rick and Morty probably is, is too big. Yes, Don Hertzfeld. Yeah. Don Hertzfeld, man. My anus so, is So, Oh, Courtney, you need to watch it. It's, I think it I is, have. It just, it's not quite It is like an award. It's an Oscar level mm -hmm. like short. It's so perfect. You've definitely seen it. Sounds it sounds like those things are ringing a bell when you <laughs> the like, saying, I am a banana. It's oh yeah, just, I've definitely seen them. I just can't remember it in my head right now. Mm, like those, oh. those sounds sound familiar. So good, so good. Um, nice. All right, my number two. Number two. Um, so my number two, I put my family. <laughs> oh. um, I was gonna have my family. My literally, my number five was my family until I switched it to balloon shop. Damn, so, I didn't even think of that. I yeah, wow, damn. my, okay, go, my go, family go. like laughing is such a big component in my family. Uh, telling jokes is just such a it's such our instinct. My grandma and papa, my mom's parents, I think they're probably the like what started it off. My grandpa wasn't funny. He wasn't a funny guy. <laughs> he wouldn't tell jokes. He would tell jokes, but they would be the dumbest jokes you've ever heard. Mm. Um. But what made him so great is uh, he was like the best audience you could ever get because he was constantly laughing. He just thought everything was funny. If you, if you told a joke, he would just be laughing. Best thing about my grandfather is I would legitimately, when I was staying with them over the summers, I would come down to the basement and there's sometimes where he would watch Tom and Jerry himself by himself for, he could watch it for hours and he'd be dying laughing at Tom Aww. and Jerry. Like dying laughing. That's so and, um, cute. My grandma though was really funny. She just would have that really sharp wit, like would say really sarcastic things. Um, I think even um, even when she got, when her cancer came back and they were like, yeah, you've got a couple months to live. I think she was even like, as my mom and her were walking out to the parking lot, I forget what she said. She made some like some dark joke and it was so funny that my mom and her just burst out laughing. Like that was her, that like was just her way mechanism. of handling everything. Yeah. And so my brothers yeah. are that way, I'm that way. And who are probably like, just as a kid that I saw and was inspired by the most is my uncles are really funny. My uncle Kelly does a ton of uh, accents and impressions. And my uncle Danny is really can make really funny facial expressions. And so when we're all together, they would end up like entertaining and they would essentially be doing like a family version of stand up. Try not to laugh. <laughs> Everyone was just, was just watching. You should give like, them they some would, props and film it. Yeah, they'd probably be really great. Um, they're really funny guys. Like there's a, there's a different world where I think they could have had us they if they'd have been a sketch duo they would have done gone far we should we should definitely send you with a couple cameras and do a a top family reunion try not to laugh oh god bro but yeah my family in general um just a lot of really funny people i totally get that i can relate like my family especially when my dad got remarried uh we had these two new step siblings they were actually named courtney and conrad so at oh, the time no. we had two courtney's and two conrad's what? but they were off the walls crazy funny and my sister carrie was already friends with courtney at the time and like our family, like just unhinged, especially with the divorce, obviously unhinged us in a way, but we all love the same funny stuff. We all watch Napoleon Dynamite 3 million times. Like, mm. so I totally relate to just being silly, like specifically my sister Man. Carrie too. All right, Courtney, number two. Number two. My number two is Lonely Island. Oh. Um, so we can kind of breeze, breeze through this, but like, yeah, I mean, when I was super obsessed with, with SNL, they blew my mind and I absorbed everything that they had on their YouTube channel. I listened to I listened to all their albums all the time, even the weird stuff that nobody knows. Wait, do you know about the Party Andersons? Party Andersons. Oh, not a real it's fan. Possible, it's oh, possible I've watched them, but I... Fan. Hello, be, don't be rude. I literally forget things, so please don't be mean. It's possible I've watched them and just haven't and can't recall them, but Awesome Town was like so great. To me, they had they had castaways, which is funny because it's very similar to that one Smosh sketch 
that you guys had. Remember when you were stranded on the beach? Yeah. Did yes. we rip it off? I don't know. Probably. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, and you know, using music and just like making comedy cool. It's yeah. so awesome. Yorma, I, I used to like be obsessed with Yorma because I thought he was the cutest. But honestly, I think Adam, uh, Andy Samberg, I almost said Adam Sandler. <laughs> Andy Samberg has influenced like every like part of my being, I feel like. He was like just the coolest person in the world to me. His acting in movies, like Hot Rod is one of the, it's a top five movie for me, for sure. So good. Um, I just rewatched it finally. It's so it's, good. It, it holds up. It's funny. They're the best. They're just the best. And I hope to see them still keep doing dope because they've been kind of quiet for a while, but I'm hoping Maybe a new album. Sure. Then. I want a new album so bad. They keep me going. Yeah. yeah they, the Lonely Island guys did a, they had this fake music group called the party andersons i i don't it's, I it rings a bell i think they only made like a couple songs but they they did one song that's just about doing cocaine nice. which they lifted a bunch of lyrics from that and put it into the uh bash bros experience oh what was great that, what was that thing called what was it called the bash bros experience something like that something that like netflix, that that netflix and that netflix thing. special that was crazy yeah. mike diva did all of that yeah that was dope all right finally on to Number, Number one. one. Do we want to? Oh, well, actually, let's do. Uh, let's do our the honorable, honorable mentions. mentions. Yeah, you can just quickly go by the honorable mentions. Uh, Amanda Bynes for sure. Michael Sarah. Hmm. Interesting. That's an interesting one. Him just as an actor and like what everything he's done, like his comedic timing and his delivery is so unique. For me, like Always Sunny. When I was talking about it, I was like, oh yeah, shit. like Always Sunny is incredible. I think. They're on the same vein of like the the it's just the dialogue is just so snappy, mm -hmm. which is why I really enjoy Letterkenny as well. Uh, Simpsons. I mean, I I grew up watching The Simpsons. It was again one of the only sort of kind of raunchy things I was allowed to watch. I have here Adult Swim, Mad TV, uh, oh, and Jim yeah. Carrey. Yeah. Jim, Jim Carrey, Carrey. Jim Carrey was just a huge absolutely. one. Absolutely. Dude, Jim Carrey was so good physically that I remember Mari was telling me that her mom like loved watching Jim Carrey and she didn't even know what he was saying. Yeah. But he was just yeah. so physically funny. There, that he's it probably just the most language. Barriers. He's probably the most unique actor to be able to say lines as wacky as he does and it still comes across genuine. All right, you want to go to number one? Finally, number, number one. one. I got to give it to Spaceballs, man. I got to give <laughs> wow. it to Spaceballs. 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 Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Dude. That came out of left field. Spaceballs. Did it? Yeah, I wasn't expecting Spaceballs. I wasn't expecting Spaceballs. It's so good. And the funny thing is like, as a kid, it's the only Mel Brooks movie that I that I had seen. I think later on I saw Robin Hood Men in Tights, but but Spaceballs was like the one that I saw. I don't even know if I saw Star Wars at that point, but I understood all the references because it was so like just in the culture. Just like making fun of Star Wars and and all the like the fourth wall breaks and everything. I had never seen that before. Like like the the part where they're like where they're like uh they're trying to find out where they where they crashed and they're like oh i know how we could do this bring me a, a copy of spaceballs the movie and then they pull <laughs> the movie out and they fast forward to the part oh where, yeah where they're in the movie but then they stop the movie at the exact time that they're in right now. I just yeah. like, that. Dude, there's so many good bits in that movie. Mm -hmm. Obviously, some of the stuff hasn't aged great. Most but, movies like that don't. But holy crap, dude. Like, mm, mm. Well, with Mel Brooks, they say a million jokes a minute. So some yeah. are going to age well and some are not. Yeah. But every single one of those Mel Brooks movies has jokes that are still laugh out loud funny. And obviously like some of the things when I was a kid I didn't understand and then and then when I got older I was like, "Oh, okay, that's funny." Yeah, man. That's probably me with like Airplane and Blazing Saddles and everything. Great yeah, stuff. I love I like okay, another another honorable mention is Charlie's Angels, the old the the 90s era movie. Because, because it's comedy. Because those 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 first two, it's like comedy bad action, and I love it because it's so corny. But there's something, and it's a common theme in all my inspirations: is comedy, but make it cool. That's what it is, man. 
Is that Cameron why Diaz, Grease I just love how is silly good? She, no. Is that why Xanadu is good? They're not funny <laughs> at all. But, uh, yeah. Um, okay, sorry. sorry. I just Continue. want to point out real quick um, how good this new Smosh shirt matches with the Smosh uh, sweatpants. Really? <gasps> Whoa! I never made that connection. Yeah. It's pretty good. That's oh, yeah, pretty cute. Like that? That's a good Look, combo. Teal matches right there. Yeah. Uh, for the, all that, that can't see, Ian is uh, showing off the sweatpants and the shirt, the, the, new, groovy the new groovy line, the new line. yeah, the Smosh new groovy, shirt. the retro, re, our retro groovy, matches groovy excellently line. with the floral great. Smosh pants. Yeah, and you can get it at Smosh.com. You got um, it. All right, okay. Shane. Um, Shane. Oh, yeah. Number one. one. My number one was the only one that I knew for sure where it was going to be. So my number one is SNL, but it is very specifically two cast members on SNL. Oh mm. God, here um, we go. It's Phil Hartman and Chris Farley. Okay. Um, mm. They are they are hands down my favorite. They I I laugh just seeing them on camera, and it's interesting because they're both very opposite styles. Phil mm-hmm. Hartman, his whole thing was always being contained. It was always about keeping calm. You know, it's always uh. Now I'm not here to come down on you or anything, <laughs> and or just like his caveman lawyer thing. There's so many bits that I do that are essentially caveman lawyer, but just a different costume where it's just like, (laughs) he's dressed as a caveman, he looks ridiculous, but he comes out and he's just like, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm just a caveman. Your technology (laughs) frightens and scares me. Like, I just love the way he delivers everything. Oh yeah, he's in jingle all the way. And then (sighs) Chris Fart, that's... Yes. Oh, uh, that famous actor from that from great Jingle All Sorry. the Way Oscar hey, please continue. nominated um, movie. And dude, his his uh fiber uh what's his the fiber cereal commercial Fibernol or what is it um Colon Blow. Mm. It, oh God, it's just a commercial for him advertising a cereal called Colon Blow, and it's so good. Well, but, and, Tr- and Troy McClure was like one of the best characters in The Simpsons. And see, I never watched The Simpsons, so yeah, he's I don't. In that. Phil Hartman's all over the place. Like he was just so, so good. Um, And then Chris Farley. I mean, it's the opposite. Chris Farley would always, always go 150% in a sketch. And I know sometimes it might have been drugs, but Uh, most of the time, (laughs) uh, but it was so fun to watch him because it was always just there was so much energy there. I would say the, you know, the motivational speaker sketch on SNL is probably like just one of the most well-known ones. And on paper, it's a really funny sketch, but it would have, it's not like on paper, it's not funnier than a lot of other sketches. Chris Farley brought so much energy to that sketch that it took it to another level. And you saw that with everything that he did. He would show up in movies throughout the 90s. Just about every Adam Sandler has Chris Farley in it for like five minutes. And it's always the best five minutes of the movie. Just because (laughs) he shows up and he's ridiculous. The bus driver in Billy Madison and it's just, it's just immediately so funny. So you're telling me your favorite part of Adam Sandler movies isn't Rob Schneider showing up as different races in every movie? Oh, no, it's not Rob Schneider showing up as different races. It's it's Chris Farley <laughs> always showing up as a pissed off guy. He's just, Chris Farley plays a pissed off man in every single one of those movies. And it's always God. great. I love him. I, I love those two actors so much. And I love... Like SNL in general, there's a million, like Dana Carvey, Mike Myers, Sherry O'Terry, like there's a million people that I love yeah. from that era. But specifically those two, I think anytime you watch uh, one of my jokes in Try Not to Laugh, you can find an element of Phil Hartman or Chris Farley in it. There's always something in how I tell a joke that is literally their voices in my head helping say the joke. Hell to the yeah. Corny. Finally, number one. Thank you. Um, I actually was, I knew th- this person was the first one I thought of, and I was so certain that they are not my number one. They've always been there. It's in my core. I still admire them today. Kristen Wiig. Oh. Um, obviously oh, watched a lot sense. of SNL. Her commitment and like just, she's not afraid to just be ugly and just go all the way weird. Like that one sketch, like, and I'm Denise, where she's like that fourth sister. Just that type of person. Oh God, I don't know. Or it's like that type of like weird humor that makes you uncomfortable. Like yeah. for a long time when I first got to know someone and I knew I liked them, I wanted to be weird and funny and just like make them 
have to be uncomfortable with me to the point where it will get them comfortable with me. I don't know. How'd that work out for you? Uh, I've had my heart broken a lot of times. You know what I think it is with Kristen Wiig is there's such an element of silliness. Like it's yes. silly. I mean, it's funny because on my little resume or whatever, when I auditioned for Smosh in my description was something I took pride in was unafraid to be ugly, which is interesting because I feel like along over the years, I got super insecure about my skin and kind of in a way was afraid in a certain way. So dude, sexual son, what the f is that just like being those weird characters uh joey bananas is that what you guys called him that that first time that you guys ever put me in that curly brown wig and a pencil stash just like brought me to life in a way i'd never like really realized mm -hmm. before and she is incredible she's a powerhouse of a human has done so many different kinds of content like in the last decade alone the fact that she's in the new wonder woman movie coming out like i'm really excited hell to see yeah it. She's in MacGruber, isn't she? Yes. And she's she's also like been yes. a huge part of like a lot of my favorite movies of all time: Adventureland, Whip It, All Right, Bridesmaids, one of the best female comedies of all time. She's so well versed, and God, when she has that she one just, character, the like the the jazz girl who turns yeah. off the lights on SNL, she was a queen. She's a she's a literal comedy queen the the one upper character that she does where she's just like yeah. actually i know oprah and yeah. she's my best friend and uh, actually i'm actually, just, actually I really like she was so good at original character she's probably i would say of all of snl she is she is the best that they've had at original characters because she had like Absolutely. a few a lot there's a lot of famous snl people who it's like oh they did that one character that's so good kristen wig had like five she had target lady she had the one upper character she had the weird hands like she would mm -hmm. always bring one. to life oh, more yeah, things. The little hands. She had. I tons, could impersonate man. all of those. She had tons. It was great, yeah. and like hers were really different. Like Will Ferrell had a lot, but Will Ferrells were always a version of Will Ferrell. Yeah, sure. Because yeah. Will Ferrell just as himself was so funny, mm -hmm. but Kristen Wiig like changed. I definitely held her close to my heart, like for as long as I was just dying and dreaming to like be a part of something. That was the level of like, man, if I could just at least feel like her, that'd be awesome, you know? Well, this was a very wonderful list. Yeah, if it's crazy how like we all came from very different lives, didn't meet each other till mid 20s or early, like I was 18 when I met you guys. We all have very similar things that brought us up, like even Monty Python, all those things. I mean, they're very popular things, granted, but it's cool that ultimately we have very similar tastes. And yeah, if you're, for those listening or watching, if you haven't seen or checked out a lot of these people, I seriously recommend it. It's gonna help your life. Yes. Ye. Oh, and just and and just when you thought this whole this whole train had come to a stop, toot toot. Guess what? No, we got one more stop, and that stop is the shoot dude station. Shoot dude. 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 Get ready for this one. This one mm. is from Taylor. She starts with all caps. All right. <laughs> when I was about 12 to 13, my family and I went to this museum and they have a section based on Chinese architecture. And we stopped to look at this big piece resembling a Chinese Imperial Palace building. We're all looking at it. It's big and red with yellow roof tiles and it's beautiful. And I'm looking at it and I'm wondering what exactly it is. So I turn <laughs> to my family, dead ass serious expression on my face and I ask, is this the Great Wall of China? Keep in <sighs> mind, I'm like 12 to 13, so I'm still a big dumbass. <laughs> my entire family starts laughing at me and I'm sitting Aww. there like, huh? I asked a genuine question and then my sister goes, no, you idiot. The Great Wall of China is in China. Oh, my goodness. Needless to say, I was incredibly embarrassed and still to this day, they bring it up constantly oh, when the whole that's family sad. gets together. That's sad. That's a sad shoot, dude. I'm sorry, That's a bud. bummer shoot, dude. That's Can a I just shoot, say, dude. I relate to this so hard. Growing up and still sometimes, I'm the queen of dumb questions. I remember in middle school, in middle school, I was like, do we have to arrest the descendants of John Wilkes Booth because he killed Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> so is his great-great-grandkids under arrest? And they're like, no, no. 
<laughs> I ask no, but they are canceled questions all the time, all the time. So I really, and it's okay. It's okay. Sometimes we just don't know stuff. And sometimes people just love to laugh at people be for, because they feel smarter. We shouldn't ever punish people for asking a question. I yeah. mean, if yeah. you ask a dumbass question, I'm, I might make a joke about it. We, might, we can funny, laugh lovingly. But, but, but I never, I, I don't think anyone should feel ashamed of asking a question. That's, that's something yeah. that I've had to, had to like get well, better the, at is, is n not, is accepting that I don't know everything. Well, yeah. Fear of asking dumb questions leads to not asking questions, which is yeah. not good. That's worse. Yeah. I told myself when I was young, like, because I felt like I was asking stupid questions and people would laugh at me and like not in a loving way. And I told myself that I would say that there's no such thing as dumb questions because yeah, it sucks. You just want to know. Sometimes you got to push through that. Just yeah. Ask the dumb question. Yeah, man. Just ask it. Have yeah. those, have that then safe you know space of people. That person answer. now knows that it's the Great Wall of China is in China. Otherwise, they, they would have told, told somebody else that they went and saw the Great they Wall of China. They would have lived their whole life thinking the Great Wall of China could be anywhere. Yeah. So, it's a good thing they asked. And it's also, though, thing. let's let's be fair. There's some things out there in the world that are confusing as like that. Like, hey, there's, the tower, there's a Kansas the, City, the Kansas City Chiefs, the football team. That's Kansas City, Missouri. That's confusing yep. as <laughs> The London Bridge, not in London anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's in Arizona, right? I think so. There's tons of rivers that are like, they're named a specific state river, but most of it is in a different yeah, state. Yeah, the Colorado River is in Arizona as well. <laughs> yeah, the, the Grand Canyon is the Colorado. It's, it's confusing, so I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, it's okay. People be, people, it's okay. Sex in the city, it wasn't sex in the city. It was four women in the city. Exactly. Bear and Ga stinky bears. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for another uh, wonderful Smosh cast. Please send your shoot dudes to <gasps> at oh, smosh. You can't type that. Oh, sorry. It's uh, shoot, shoot dude at dude. smosh com. S H O O T D O O D <laughs> at smosh com. Let us know what your favorite comedy influences are down in the comments below. Yes. Or critique critique ours and tell us we're dumb and we yes. our comedy influences tell us are And ask any stupid questions that you've been wanting to ask anyone but haven't felt safe. Ask them yeah. in the comments down below. And if people are yeah. into you, ignore mm -hmm. them. And get this sweet get this sweet merch combo that I got. It's pretty sick. It's At pretty smosh. cute. Com. Uh, rate us five stars in the app store so we can continue doing this and talking to each other and you could hear our voice. You could hear mm -hmm. our voice. And uh, love you, bye. Love Goodbye. you, bye. Bye. bye.